Senator Urquhart. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. I rise to lend my support to the many thousands of women, men and women across the world who last week took part in the 2012 Global Days of Action for Trade Union Freedom in Mexico. The week of the 19th to the 25th of February commemorates the sixth anniversary of the explosion at the Pasta de Conchos mine in Mexico, where 65 workers were killed. The mine is owned by the Mexican company Grupo Mexico, who is in turn owned by the second richest man in Mexico, German Larrera. The bodies of 63 of the men are still buried underground, and the government of Mexico has held no one to account for this tragedy. Working conditions at the mine were so bad that the General Secretary, Secretary of Los Mineros, the Mexican Miners and Metal Workers Union, Napoleon Gomez Urita, called it industrial homicide. The first day of action was held on February 19, 2006, and involved a symbolic and emotional wait from 2 a.m. until 12 p.m. in the Central Square in Mexico City. As a reminder that those have yet to receive a decent burial, 63 wooden crosses, each with the name of one of those who died, were placed alongside the helmets of the dead miners while candles lit the scene. Those present called on the government and on Grupo Mexico to recover the remains, the remains of those who died and reminded them that this is technically possible. It is now six years since the miners were killed and to this day, Baru families still await proper compensation and recoveries of the bodies for the funeral. Miners, the local community, the Mexican National Human Rights Commission of Deputies, echo, uh, sorry, and the investigative committee of the Chamber of Deputies echo the call of the Los Mineros General Secretary and believe that Grupo Mexico's illegal safety violations killed the 65 miners and note that a pattern of irregularities in the inspection of labour standards. The United Nations International Labour Organisation has also recommended that adequate sanctions be imposed on those responsible for this disaster. Participa participants in these days of action demanded that the Mexican government do a number of things. Respect the ILO's recommendation to hold those responsible for the Pasta de Conchisa's explosion accountable and that adequate sanctions be applied. Abolish system systemic violations of workers' freedom of association, including employer-dominated protection contracts and interference in union elections. End the use of force by the state or private parties to repress workers' legitimate demands for democratic unions better wages and working conditions, and good health and safety conditions. End the campaign of political persecution against Los Mineros, and also to respect the ILO's recommendations on protection unionism to engage in good faith social dialogue with independent and democratic unions and seek out legislative measures to end the practice of protection contracts. The demands mirror those of the 2011 Days of Action, where over 50,000 activists held massive mobilisations worldwide, and are particularly necessary because of the steep deterioration in the rights of Mexican workers, particularly in their right to collectively organise through a union of their choosing over the past 12 months. In March last year, the governing body of the International Labour Organisation called on the Mexican government to end the use of protection contracts concluded between a charro or ghost union and an employer with no consultation or mandate from the workers they cover. Contracts which systematically violate workers' rights that are enshrined in Mexican and international law. Despite these strong rec recommendations, the Mexican government has failed to reply and appears that no action has been taken up. It is important to remember that Mexico is a recent G20 host, former WTO host, aspiring Trans-Pacific Partnership member and a member of the United Nations is a party to the International Labour Organisation conventions. As such, it is simply not good enough for a country to take with one hand and turn a blind eye with another in regards to its international obligations, especially when this impacts on some of its most vulnerable people. Examples of ongoing abuses that demonstrate the worsening of labour rights protections over the past year include 
lack of recognition of independent and democratic unions and their democratic, democratically elected leaders, mass sackings of workers as a result of the illegal or fraudulent closure of unionised companies, and the manipulation of legal and administrative processes for determining union representation and collective bargaining rights, and the sudden appearance of shadow or ghost unions in false representation of workers. I have been provided with a number of examples of ongoing abuses that demonstrate the worsening of labour rights protections in Mexico. I wish to highlight those specifically against the members and officials of Los Mineros. Just days before the explosion at Pasta de Conchos, six years ago, the government of Mexico declined to recognise the leadership of that union. The union's general secretary has been democratically elected by its members twice but has been forced to operate from exile in Canada for more than half of his term as the government does not recognise his leadership of the union. The union secretary-treasurer was released after spending over two years in jail and being subjected to 19 mistrials just days after the 2011 Global Days of Action for Trade Union Freedom in Mexico. 1,300 troops provide daily safe passage to an equivalent number of scab workers at the Canina mine site owned by Grupo Mexico, where Los Mineros, the union workers, have been on strike for over four and a half years for improved health and safety conditions. This is after the June 10, 2012 raid on this strike by over 4,000 Mexican government troops, in which tear gas and force were used on the, mica the, mica the miners who were striking simply for a safe work site. The union is under attack at several other mine sites, where three protection unions operate in complicity with the Canadian mining company Exelon to pre prevent a new Los Mineros local union branch from gaining bargaining rights for 400 workers. The union is also under attack in places where auto parts assembly plant, plant workers are choosing to join. The most important example of that is at the Finnish-owned PKC wire harnesses plant in Shadade Akono, where 7,000 workers are now facing a legally sanctioned protected union and, are, and a concerted anti-worker campaign in a bid to prevent them from having the right to a voice on the job. I stand with workers and unionists from across the globe at the Days of Action in calling on the Mexican government through President Calderon to stop its attack on workers to implement steps to allow for workers to organise independent democratic trade unions of their choosing, to uphold its internationally recognised obligations and to implement the, last, the March 2011 International Labour Organisation recommendations. I urge the Mexican, Mexican government to do so through constructive dialogue with unions and social partners and to seek out legislative measures that will end the practice of protection contracts and initiate real change for the advancement of trade union rights in Mexico. I also urge the Mexican government to ensure that the bodies or the, the, the company um, and the, the, the government to force the company to remove the bodies of these workers back to their families so they can be given the dignity of a proper burial and, um, and their families can at least grieve in the proper process. Thank you.